What's up guys, you're Bigly here. As promised, I'm here with the story of calories. This is going to cover what happened to our nutrition system right from 1850 and we are going to see how calories has hijacked our conscience in terms of analyzing the science and following some dumb diets. Okay, so first I'm going to be talking about William Banting. This is somewhere around 1863 that Mr. William Banting of England wrote a book called as Letter on Corpulence Addressed to Public. This pamphlet was considered as the first diet book that was ever published. Okay, so this is going to be the content of the book. Okay, so this guy at the age of 62 figures out that his body weight is 202 pounds, that is about 90 kilos. This guy was a tiny kid, he was always in the normal range, but from his adult years, he gained one or two pounds every year, that would be half to one kg every year. And at the age of 62, he was looking pretty fat. Though that is a normal weight of people today, he felt he was very fat and first approached to his doctors as that was the most best thing to do for him. The doctors told, you got to eat less and work more. Heard this from your coach? Yeah, you also heard the same thing. So what he decided was he lived near the river Thames. So he started doing rowing the boat every day for activity and reduced his food consumption. This was not a practical approach for him because rowing, the physical activity was intense and that gave him a lot of hunger and he was not able to sustain on reduced portion of food. So there it got lost. This is one problem that most of the people have. When you start activity, your hunger increases and people think it is only a conscious decision of the mind through which you control hunger. No, there are a lot of things involved. That's what this shows us. Then he meets one of his surgeon friends and this friend suggests him that he has to get rid of sugars and the processed food in this diet. That's the time when cookies were so yummy for him. So what he did was he cut out everything that was sweet and everything that was processed and cut out beer which was a very common thing for people there in the evenings. Voila! He started losing weight. Not only that, he lost the weight and he was able to maintain his fitness from then on. So he published in his letter on corpulence that processed carbohydrates were fattening and avoiding them will prevent you from obesity. This is what even our grandmother tells you to just think back. A grandmother would advise you don't eat food bought from outside, let's have cooked food from home. We know the recipes made at home are filled with love and less with processed food. Okay, that's a no-brainer. Then what happened? 1900s is when the real calorie era started. Okay, I've got notes down here so that I don't mess with the years and the names. So in the year 1900, Dr. Huge Rose wrote a book called as Eat your way to health, which was completely calorie based. And in 1918, this is the one that revolutionized Diet and Health Key to Calories by Dr. Lulu Hunt Peters. Okay, if you look at the book by Dr. Lulu Hunt Peters, she recommended a typical format of diet. This was the first formatted diet protocol. A diet consisted of one or two days of fasting, okay, no eating, only water, and five days 
of 1200 calorie diet this did not say how much protein carbohydrate fat what time of the day none of those but the recommendation was this unable saw very good weight loss but the calorie conscious are always a little lazy the reason is this because if you look at fasting we are un undercovering a lot of you know like uh, scientific studies that say how fasting can improve your insulin sensitivity how fasting can give rise to autophagy it's a separate episode on its own but fasting can be tremendous when it is intermittent that is done sometimes so this Dr. Peters gave fasting for two days that was one milestone and the other part was restricting the food to 1200 calories but fasting was tough so the population left the fasting and stuck on to 1200 calorie diet. You remember most of those internet articles that hover around 8200 calories they started not just a decade ago it started from 1918. Wow. Then 1950 is when the calories take a evil turn. Okay. So if you look at the 1950s, they started seeing a lot of heart attack cases in America. And for everything, we have data either originating from America or from the Great Britain because that's where the you know like noting down culture was present predominantly. Only now we have a lot of studies in India. So I'm sticking on to them. So about uh, 1950, what happened was a lot of people were seeing heart disease. But if we analyze the data today, we find a different kind of detail. 1950 is when a lot of vaccines came around and life expectancy of a man in 1900 was only 50 years, whereas the life expectancy of a man in uh, 1950 was 68 years. So the scientists today analyze that and say because they were saved from pneumonia, tuberculosis, uh, gut bacteria issues and all those things, they live longer. The expectancy of getting a heart attack for a 60 year old man is more than a 50 year old man. That was the reason why the heart attack suddenly claimed. But every story needs a villain that's when the people say fat is the culprit fat increases cholesterol do not eat fat if you want to live longer but you know if you are reducing fat what goes up it has to be either protein or carbohydrate but when they say fat they consider meat as fat milk as fat so the protein consumption went down and the carbohydrate consumption slowly climbed up and this gave rise to the low fat dieting protocol that was calorie restricted but there was this nutritionist from british called as john dudkin this guy fought against it and he said there is no correlation between fat and heart disease directly and cholesterol is not fat, these are lipoproteins that carry fat, you are completely mistaken. But people were not ready to listen. And this guy, John Yudkin, wrote a book that could be given the best title award, which is called as Pure, White and Deadly, How Sugar is Killing Us. Okay, So this is uh, in the 1950s. After that, 1977 was the revolution of diet. Why would I say that? It was not scientists, it was not fitness people, and it was not dietitians that gave the recommendation. It was Mr. George McGroger. He was the United States Senate Committee on Nutrition and Human Needs head. Okay, this guy said fat is guilty of heart attack and asked people to eat a carb-based diet. So his recommendation was published as 55 to 60 percentage of your diet should be from carbohydrates in basis of calories, 
fat should be 30 percentage or less in terms of calories and in that no more than one third of calories should come from saturated fats okay the animal fats okay they have always got the bad rap but the latest scientific research say they are not that bad at all and then so the protein was kept low but even in this recommendation mr george mcroger says white sugar is evil and stay away from it but somehow the processed carbohydrates escape his vision and they make into every breakfast table in the form of processed cereals to entire america this was done in 1977 and by 1980 almost everyone was following this pattern of 55 to 60 percentage of diet from carbohydrates and which was filled with processed carbohydrate if you look at 1995 that was the biggest disaster ever i would call it the atom bomb from the american art association 1995 they gave a recommendation in which they clearly specified you can eat five to six servings of either white bread or pasta sounds familiar everything is processed fat and then the next one is to keep yourself hydrated make sure you choose water or fruit juices they display a canned fruit juice and soda and pop okay so that was the biggest biggest ever blunder that was done by a federation or an association that was supposed to govern people's health okay if you look at a study in 1979 a campaign against smoking and tobacco was done in the us and by 1994 there was a 25 percentage drop in smoking that was saving lives but because of this progressive blunder in terms of diet without proper scientific analysis the low fat high carbohydrate diet which was calorie restricted which was supposed to reduce people's weight and improve the heart health of people the average uh, obesity rate of the American population was somewhere around 10% in 1966 and in 1976 it is termed to be somewhere around 40% and climbing. So the concept that I am trying to convey here with the story is this. There are a lot of diets that are given out on the internet which will glorify the calories. I'm not fighting against calories, but the concept is calories on their own is meaningless. A lot of diets that people suggest do not have any scientific evidence. Your grandma knew better. She wanted you to avoid processed carbohydrates and sugar, whereas there were federations and nutrition group that started recommending these, which led to the pandemic kind of heart attack issue. They call it heart attack as one of the biggest parasite, obesity as the biggest parasite because of these kind of issues. So with this, I'm just giving you an open thought that don't just believe on all the internet articles. There are a lot of scientific researches and books that tell you why calorie alone is not a great factor for fat loss and why hormones play a very important role in the fat loss. I'm going to be coming up with a series of nutritional videos where I'm going to teach you how to make your own fat loss diet, how to make your own muscle gain diet, which will talk about how to portion control and how to choose based on your availability, your ethnicity and what is most suitable for you. And I hope you people enjoy the information that you gathered and you have some clear air right now. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you immediately go down and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that every video that I post about fitness and nutrition reaches your inbox. 
If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Also, on the comment section, tell me what you would like to hear from me next. And please do share it with your friends so that more people can know the truth. Until my next video, it's your with me. Over and out.